Oh hey, before we start, we should all say thank you to Pixel for making this video lesson possible because Pixel is the main sponsor of this video right here. A company and brand that specializes in making awesome photographic and videographic equipment. More on Pixel later on. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how you can shoot a Nespresso coffee machine exactly like how Nespresso would shoot them in their commercials. And that's it. We might as well throw something in the mix as well. Let's shoot their milk frother as well. The Aerocino 3. Viewers, I'm going to do this shot with just one single LED light. And that one single LED light I'm going to use will be the Pixel P80 RGB LED light. If you're going to do any shot with just one light, this would be the light I recommend you to use. This is a fantastic product. We reviewed it recently. You should watch this video here. This is a product that get five stars from all of us all across the board, from the producer, from my crew, from I myself. We gave this a five star product. So the light is going to be, you know what, before we even worry where to put the light, how to set up the light, and we're going to show you how you can use one light, we should prep the product now. And viewers, one of the biggest questions I always ask myself before I start any shoot is how far do I shoot this away from the wall? Let me show you why. So if I put the acrylic sheet close to the wall, you notice there's only a line. But if I separate it from the wall, there's a shadow and that's harder to clone away later on. So flush it to the wall. What's next to do? Clean up this acrylic sheet. Jeez, why did they put the serial number sticker here? And this is my biggest problem. The wire, the power cord. You see, ideally I like to stick it to the back. But then when I do this, you notice that the shadow is out again. So what I like to do is put it to the side and flush this to the wall. But when I see this, you notice that you can see through this water canister. But I'm not going to cut this because then there's too much of problem of digging all the screws and removing the wires. Not in a hacking mood. So logically, the only way to do this is to fling it this side. So viewers, my choice of light would be an LED light. That is the Pixel P80 video light. Why do I use an LED light? The reason is because if I'm shooting with a smartphone, using a hot shoe flash or studio strobe, then we have problems syncing to the shutter of a smartphone. So an LED light that is continuously on is going to be amazing. Now, this is the cool part about the Pixel. I can use my phone to control this light. So I just turn this on. And here is the interesting feature of this light. I can change the color to any color that I want, all from my phone. But then again, this is white. Any color that's not white is going to ruin this shot because the espresso machine is white. So I'm just going to go right here and go right to the center. So by doing this, is so tricky. You cannot really nail this. And that is why Pixel P80 offers me a few tabs. So I'll head on to CCT here and make sure that I drag this all the way down to a Kelvin value of 5,000 and then drag this magenta to green right to zero. And this is now white. So I'm getting perfect white light now. And there's a lot of things I can do with my smartphone here connected to this light via Bluetooth. I can change to gel mode on Lee gel filters or you know what? As simple as just adjusting the power. If you don't want to use your smartphone, there's always an interface at the back here, the button panel. So I'm going to go right up and change the intensity. So my ultimate aim is to try to use one LED light. So we've got to figure out where to place this light. Oh, hang on. One important note before I tell you about the position of the light. Now, let me, let me just bring this down to show you this. The P80 runs with embedded SMT, surface mounted LED lights. You know by now that there are three types of LED light. The oldest generation will be this type of LED light. 
and then you have the SMT light. And here's the thing, if you're shooting reflective product and glossy product like the coffee machine here, you do not want to have all these SMT LED lights appearing as beads. And one of my most favorite feature, it has this built-in diffusion panel that kind of like flattens the light. So that way I don't get all these beaded LED lights reflecting off the surface of the coffee machine. All right, so back to the power of light that I want. Let's get the position of the light. So my first instinct is to put this here and then raise the light and then tilt this down. And take a look at this new problem now. With the light over on the right hand side of the coffee machine, I now cast a shadow on the acrylic sheet here. That is not desirable. Well, I know that putting it to the left hand side will not solve the problem either. Look, I'm now casting shadow to the right hand side of the coffee machine. So left and right will not work. The best way to eliminate this is to have the light in the center, kind of like butterfly lighting. Hey, talking about butterfly lighting, did you watch this episode or this tutorial on my premium courses where I guide users step by step the difference of lightings that you can use for your portrait shots. And butterfly lighting is a good classical lighting that positions the light right in the center. And here's the thing, I like to push this to the front so that the shadow now goes down to the coffee machine below. And one more thing, I'm gonna raise the light really high up and then push it as front as possible and then tilt this down. When I do so, all the light will go down and we can get this highlight at the top and you notice that this is important because I'm now casting light on the wall and on the acrylic sheet and on the coffee machine as well. And this brings us to the most important benefit of putting the light shining down from top to here. Number one, when you're shooting product, you need to understand the coolest feature of that product. The most important, tasteful thing about this product is this little handle that you can lift up to put the capsule. That's one. So when I have the light coming down, you notice that we have this beautiful outline of specular highlight defining this shape here. And then this bulge here is the second thing. So you notice with the light coming down, there's a shadow here and there's a highlight here. And that gives it that shape, that bulge. And the third interesting shape of the Ascenza Mini, these drain holes that we have here, and each and every one of them have this specular highlight and shadow and specular highlight and shadow. And there's one here too. And finally, with the light coming down, you get this surface really bright. You can see the logo real well. And here is in the exquisite mid-tone. And not only that, the light is also lighting up the wall and also the acrylic sheet. And there's a fair bit of reflection. Compare this to Essenza's actual ad on Espresso's website. They have this reflection as well. And if you can see this at the back, you can really see a shadow here, which the camera won't be able to see because it's hidden at the back. So having the light coming down is a great choice. The only thing I'm not happy now is that I have to post-process this cable away. Well, this happens regardless of what camera I use. So we're gonna post-process this away. And also this line that we have here and this line that we have here. So to take the shot, I'm gonna use the iPhone 13 Pro. I'm just gonna use the standard camera, but I'm gonna go on three times. Okay, looking at this now, I can see a new problem. I'm gonna take this shot and show you now. If you look at this photo that I just shot, you notice that there is a black edge here. This is a reflection of the wall. It's not bright enough. So at this point, you may need to consider whether this is good enough. I am not happy with this yet. So I may need to put a flag here. And then I'm gonna go on to P80, the LED light that I'm using here. And this is what I like about the P80 for product shoots like this. It's a flat panel LED light and it has a bundle. So for this to hit this flag, I just need to open this bundle and close this a little bit so that it shines more light onto the flag. Oh, quick note if you're using iPhone, you notice that you have this ability to turn on RAW here. This is Apple's Pro RAW. To be able to do this, you can go to your camera, go to settings, scroll down and look for camera. Head on in there, go to format and you can turn this on. When you have this on, you can have Apple Pro RAW. And you head on to your camera right now. Shooting this at RAW will give you more headroom for post-processing in your editing software later on. I'm not about to do this, I'll just shoot in JPEG. So I'm gonna turn this to three times macro. Get the angle that I like, which is just about here. 
Make sure that the grid line is aligned to the vertical line of the Nespresso coffee machine. And I'm going to focus on just about here. And push the brightness with this little sun icon. And then hold it still, align as well. Take that shot. Oh hey, earlier on I did tell you that I will talk more about our main sponsor, Pixel. Pixel is a brand that specializes in making quality photographic and videographic equipment. In fact, you should visit their website and find out more about the equipments that they make. You see, the equipment that Pixel makes include lighting control, shutter control, image transmission, flash, and all this cool photography and videography equipment. You see, Pixel strives to provide good quality, safe to use, and truly reliable high-end accessories for photography and videography. So how do I know that Pixel's products are of good quality? Because I use them myself, I use their lighting. And because of this, I strongly encourage you to visit their website and check out the cool equipments that they make. And again, Pixel, thank you for making this video possible. And together we can be better in photography because of good equipments and brands like this. And this is the shot that we got. Not too bad at all. I kind of like how everything is equally wide and bright. Now, a few things we need to work on this. Number one, you see that edge that we have with the acrylic sheet towards the wall. We need to clone this away. There's a little bit on the right hand side. There's more on the left hand side. And of course, this ugly cable. Now, when you're professionally shooting in the studio for brands like this, they can actually send you units that do not have the cable. Well, most of the time, the easier thing to do is just to magnify this, go in and use your polygonal lasso tool select this portion out close the selection right click choose fill and let's photoshop's content away do its magic work done in the event that the ai or filling is not so good you can always choose your brush and use alternate on the keyboard pick the closest color here and then just paint this ugly imperfection away command d undo and cable gone but zoom in carefully that wasn't a good job here. So I'm going to click edit, undo select, and do it better. And done. And now time to make this shot look more three-dimensional. After all, we're using one line, and there's a lot of black at the front of the coffee machine here. Easy. Go to image. So I'm going to head on to adjustment and head on to curves. This is actually a representation of your histogram. So I'm going to do an S shape with this line. Push this up and come here and bring this down. But you notice that when I do this, the shadow is too strong. So you can push this up accordingly until you see sufficient of detail in the black area. This is good. This is the Arucino Milk Frother taken with the same iPhone 13 and one single LED light, the Pixel P80. The only thing I'm not happy about this is that the Milk Frother, despite being new, it has scratches. Ouch. But never mind. These are the photos of what we get. That's it. If you want to learn further how to retouch all these photos to this quality, head on to our YouTube exclusive members and watch how our image retoucher Tarshan does it step by step. You should head on there and support our effort here. Thank you.
So I bet you enjoyed today's video. If you do, I'd like to say thank you for watching this. In return, I hope you do three things for me. Number one, click the like button. Share this video and at the same time, make some comments. But I know I'll improve as well. If you make comments, I'll make my effort to reply them as well. That way, the YouTube algorithm is going to be happy. So when you click like on the video and you share the video and you make comments, then our videos and our channel will get better ranking. And when that happens, brands can then come in and sponsor video lessons like this and we can all learn and be better in photography and videography. At the same time, if you can, click subscribe too. That's really important. And also, that's it. Head on to my e-learning website. I'd love to have you supporting our e-learning content. These are paid content. The premium courses, the all access, and all these individual e-learning accounts. When you do so, we'll improve in photography, videography, and at the same time, I'll be able to make more videos for you. See ya!